Hello everyone, my name is Daily Manwas and welcome to another video. In this video I will be recapping this manhwa called Reborn as a Squid. I hope you enjoy the video. This story begins with our protagonist, a young boy named Huey King. He was disabled due to an illness. Once he turned 18, he acquired a broken ability that allowed him to turn defeated enemies into his subordinates. He had come with his subordinates to a fruit vendor point to take control of the district, using the excuse that his disability was caused by the fruit from this place. His team was mainly composed of him and a girl named Xin Yun, his childhood friend. She was a simple girl but had an impressive combat ability. He was the leader of the group, and she executed his plans. Thanks to their combined efforts, they now had a couple of henchmen. In the entire city, there were only three fruit vendor points. After conquering a family courtyard in the south, this was the most important point to dominate the entire district. The owner refused to believe that his disability was caused by the fruit. Seeing that the protagonist and his group wouldn't give up, he ordered his group to eliminate them. To their surprise, instead of fighting, the protagonist's subordinates stole the fruit and fled. In a matter of seconds, all his fruit had disappeared. Furious, he ordered all his men to retrieve the fruit. While he was distracted, Zinion had stolen the license of his company. Quickly, the protagonist called the police, informing them of an illegal vending stall. Everything was going according to his plan, and the police arrived. Meanwhile, a truck driver and his sister were transporting illegal goods. Seeing the police car, the driver got nervous and quickly skidded into an alley at full speed. In front of him was the protagonist, who quickly used his secret technique to move his wheelchair and get out of the road. But unfortunately, an apple got in his way, and the truck crashed into him, causing his death. His last thought was that if he weren't disabled, he wouldn't have died. After a few moments, he woke up, facing a beautiful girl. The first thing he did upon waking was to move his paralyzed legs. The girl explained to him that he was now in a spiritual state. Rudely, he pointed at the girl and asked about her. The girl got angry and started using her powers to erase the protagonist's fingers. She was the chief editor, or the goddess creator, and he had died, causing his previous world to be destroyed. He was a comic book character, which is why he had a cheat ability that allowed him to turn defeated enemies into subordinates. He couldn't believe that he had died. He was so close to dominating the world and reaching the pinnacle. Since his greatest wish was to reach the pinnacle, the girl decided to give him another chance to reincarnate. He was happy to hear this and asked for one thing, that in his reincarnation, he would have healthy limbs and the power to regenerate them, so he would never be disabled again. She agreed. This time, the protagonist would be able to reach the pinnacle thanks to his healthy limbs. Using her powers, she sent him to his new world. Before he could ask for one last favor, he was transported to his new world. He woke up in his new body at the bottom of the ocean. Now, he could breathe underwater, but his body felt strange. As he looked at his reflection in a piece of glass, he realized he was a small squid. Seeing his new form, he panicked. He started getting angry at the goddess for laughing at him and reincarnating him as a small squid. Realizing that getting angry wouldn't change the situation, he began to think about how to use his limbs for the first time. Using the knowledge from his previous life, he managed to move for the first time. While practicing, some fish began to move rapidly toward him. When he looked to see what was happening, he realized that all the fish were being sucked in by a whale, and the favorite food of whales was squid. The whale began to whisper words. Seeing that the whale could talk, he tried to negotiate with it, but the whale had no intention of negotiating in the slightest. As he was being sucked in by the whale, he wondered why he didn't have any special abilities. At that moment, the system notified him that his system hadn't been fully activated yet, so for now, he could only use the original abilities of squids. The first ability was flexible limbs, and the special ability was squid ink. He used the ability to expel ink at the whale to try to escape, but unfortunately, due to the difference in size, the ink had no effect, and he was absorbed by the whale. Ten minutes later, he was still clinging to the whale's tongue thanks to his strong suction cups. He wasn't planning to give up until he reached the pinnacle. After a few more minutes, his energy was running out, and he finally let go of the tongue and fell. As he fell, he noticed the blowholes of the whale. At that moment, he realized that his lack of energy was due to the lack of oxygen. Both he and the whale were running out of oxygen, and there wasn't much time left for the whale to surface to breathe. He seized the opportunity and with his last bit of strength, he plugged the whale's blowholes with his small body. The whale realized that he was still alive and desperately leaped out of the water, trying all sorts of movements to get the squid to let go of its blowholes. Inside, the protagonist was also reaching his limit. At this rate, he would die before the whale. But luckily for him, the whale reached its limit and died. He quickly escaped the body to breathe. After the whale died, its body began to turn into energy, and that energy entered his body. As a reward for defeating the whale, the system granted him growth points and experience through the energy. He tried to open the inventory to see his rewards, 
but the system notified him that he hadn't activated the system, so he didn't have the authority to view his rewards. To activate the system, he had to form a soul contract with an inhabitant of Atlantis in order to activate the double entwining system. After thinking for a while, he noticed the sparkling lights of the underwater depths. As he submerged a bit, he reached the coral reef area. The system rewarded him with more rewards. He leveled up from level 1 to level 3, and his ink ability was also improved. The cooldown time for the ability decreased from 5 minutes to 1 minute. He used the ink ability and realized that the area affected by the ability had increased by 30%, but he wasn't pleased at all. This ability was useless and had no special effect. While muttering, he began to hear strange noises. Thinking it might be an enemy, he shouted for whoever it was to show themselves. Suddenly, small squids emerged from under the rocks. The squids thanked him for getting rid of the whale that had always been terrorizing them. Now that he could communicate, he planned to tell them about his current situation. He asked them for information about Atlantis. However, they didn't know anything about Atlantis at all. He asked them what they did daily if they didn't know anything. They spent their days collecting pearl shells. Hearing this, he thought he might have been reborn in a marine hunting simulator to collect shells as a squid. Suddenly, they started hearing two individuals talking. The squids quickly grabbed the protagonist and hid under the rocks. The two voices belonged to the rotten fish and the rotten shrimp. They had come to collect the shells the small squids had gathered. The two appeared. The level 4 catfish was Zio Chuin and the level 4 lobster was Guangzai. They were talking about their boss, who resided in the Coral City. It was the lobster's first time meeting Master Lon, so he felt obliged to give him something as a show of respect. They were like his former subordinates. They had come to collect protection fees. Huang Zhai hit the rock and ordered them to hand over the protection fee. They were gangsters who extorted the weak. At that moment, the protagonist remembered that they had been talking about the Coral City earlier, so the key to becoming stronger lay in the Coral City. The lobster abruptly grabbed one of the squids and demanded 300 shells as a protection fee. This was the law of the jungle. He had experienced moments like this many times in his previous life. The protagonist decided to leave the hiding spot to escape and continue his journey. Upon leaving, the two gangsters realized he was new to the area. The catfish hit him because he didn't follow the rules. If a new inhabitant encountered these gangsters, they were required to greet them as a sign of respect. Then the lobster hit him again, intending to break his tentacles to teach him the rules. The protagonist fled since it was the best way to avoid getting hurt. He couldn't fight against them due to the size difference. To his surprise, the lobster was very fast. In the blink of an eye, it caught him. For trying to escape, he now had to pay three times the amount of the protection fee. He was angry. First, he was transported to another world as a squid, then he was chased by a whale, and now he was being bullied by some shellfish. The lobster and the catfish thought he was saying strange things out of fear. Angry, he used his improved ink ability and expelled ink at the two. Taking advantage of the situation, he managed to free himself from the lobster's pincers. Because he had used too much ink, he couldn't tell which direction to flee in. Amidst the ink, one of the small squids grabbed his hand and led him away from the gangsters to another hiding spot. The little squids were impressed by his ink expulsion ability. They suggested that the best option right now was to escape. Running away was an insult to him. He had never fled in his past life without first taking revenge on those who had harmed him. The two gangsters were still trapped in the ink and unable to use their eyes. He intended to take revenge on them and make them pay double. Quickly looking around, he found a couple of seaweeds. Seeing the seaweed gave him an idea. After a while, the lobster finally managed to escape the ink. He was furious and wanted to make the squids pay for rebelling. Looking around, he saw one of the squids' tentacles behind a rock. Without hesitation, he quickly advanced toward the rocks. Approaching the rocks, he noticed a piece of seaweed. He didn't pay much attention to it, but what he didn't know was that he had fallen into the protagonist's trap. He signaled to the small squids, and all three grabbed the seaweed and pulled with all their strength. The seaweed began to wrap around the lobster's body. The protagonist was too intelligent to get abused by someone like the lobster. The lobster had to train for another 100 years. But to his misfortune, the seaweed also caught him. As a result, he kissed the lobster. He ordered the small squids to stop, but they didn't listen and continued using all their strength. After a while, they realized that they had not only trapped the lobster but also trapped him. Now he was caught alongside the lobster. But he remembered that he was now a squid, so by exerting a bit of force, he managed to escape from the seaweed. He quickly covered the lobster's mouth to prevent it from calling for its friend. Finally, he had managed to immobilize the lobster. The small squids began to celebrate their victory. 
but the protagonist intended to punish them for trapping him alongside the lobster. He tied up the small squid so they wouldn't cause him any more trouble. For capturing a level 3 lobster and 3 level 1 squids, the system rewarded him by strengthening his arms and legs. Now he could cling to things 20 times heavier than him. His victory was certain, but behind him, a shadow began to grow larger. Both the squids and the lobster were terrified. This shadow belonged to the catfish. He used his devour ability, which allowed him to swallow his prey silently using the water current. He began to have a bad feeling. Unconsciously, he dodged the catfish's attack. The squids had highly developed nerves that were very sensitive, capable of detecting even the slightest change in the water. The catfish realized that he was different from the other squids. He used its level 4 ability, causing his body to become more muscular. Then he employed his other ability, called Explosive Charge, and rapidly charged towards him. Close combat wasn't his forte. He was the strategist, his childhood friend was the one who handled combat. At that moment, another idea struck him. He quickly moved towards the lobster to test the enhanced strength of his arms and legs. He activated his level 4 ability and his tentacles began to grow and strengthen. Using all his might, he managed to lift the lobster's body, then spun and slammed the lobster into the catfish, amplifying the impact. Due to the collision, the lobster lost one of his pincers, and the catfish tumbled back several meters onto the rocks. The catfish's body was stuck. He approached the lobster, which now trembled in fear and had completely changed his attitude. He took hold of the lobster's pincer, intending to make him pay for his actions. The lobster was terrified, but he didn't plan to use the pincer against him. Instead, he approached the catfish. With a wicked expression, he aimed at the catfish's rear end. The lobster was in tears, seeing his pincer touching such a repugnant spot. With swift strikes, he inflicted significant damage. Both the lobster and the squids were horrified. The catfish used his special ability called Secret Slime, and his body began to expel a disgusting substance. Seizing the opportunity, the catfish used all his strength to free itself from the rocks and escape the area. The protagonist intended to make the catfish pay even more than the lobster for his actions. The system rewarded him with a new ability called Camouflage Color Change for defeating a much stronger enemy. Despite obtaining a valuable reward, he was still upset. He made it clear to the lobster that he would be the next to receive punishment. Seeing no other option, the lobster began to beg for forgiveness. He had followed the wrong leader for half his life and asked if he could become one of his subordinates. The protagonist was surprised, as his initial intention was merely to instill fear. However, now the lobster was pleading with him as if he were a god. He agreed to turn the lobster into his ally but on the condition that he would reveal all the information he knew so far. In the Coral City, the catfish visited its master to seek revenge on the little squid. He mentioned that the squid had mocked him, even knowing that he had such a powerful master. The master got angry. He had sent the catfish in search of treasures, but he had returned empty-handed and had even lost to a nobody. The catfish explained that he was weak because he hadn't formed a contract. The master agreed to provide a contract but with the condition that when the catfish became stronger, he had to eliminate all the trash in the city without revealing true identity of his master. His master had retired and couldn't leave often, so he assigned his contract bearer, Ningyi, to accompany him and help find a person to establish a contract. Ningyi was an Atlantean. He asked the catfish to follow him. Upon leaving the master's room, he encountered a level 8 woman named Quirong. He greeted her while pondering how he had ended up with them. As soon as she saw him, she gave him a hard slap. Confused, Ningyi asked why she had hit him. She replied that she disliked his unpleasant smile. Since joining the Kui family, he had achieved nothing worthwhile. Meanwhile, other family members were aiding their families by capturing sea creatures. She felt embarrassed seeing others bringing home marine animals while she spent her days walking around. Nengi told her that all the creatures he had brought had been killed due to her previous experiments. She had a sadistic obsession with experiments, something the catfish didn't want to deal with. Seeing the catfish, she thought it was a new creature and quickly pounced on him. Impressed by his size, she was determined to form a contract with him. Ningyi was relieved that he no longer had to find someone for the catfish. Quirong asked her assistant, Chen Zinian, who had lost her memory, to take her bag home while she went for a ride on her new marine creature. In the outskirts of Coral City, the protagonist, along with the lobster and the squids, headed towards the city center. On the way, he got rid of the small squids to prevent them from causing more trouble in the future. He rode on the shrimp, which had regained its pincer. Arthropod limbs could regenerate slowly. After hearing what the giant shrimp had told him, he had a clearer idea of this new world. Atlanteans resembled humans but had the ability to breathe underwater. They had developed their own civilization underwater over time. Meanwhile, in the wild areas, a wide variety of strange creatures existed. Marine beings could form contracts with Atlanteans. Only after both parties signed the contract could they gain the double entanglement ability through the golden finger. To activate the system, he needed to establish a contract, and in doing so, 
He could gain powerful abilities and advantages in this world. He realized he wasn't the only one with the system. He was curious about the double entanglement technique. After a while of walking, they reached a peripheral area, a favorite spot for Atlanteans to stroll. He also realized that the lobster didn't know about the existence of the system. Before, he had used his barbs to communicate with it, so now he just returned fragments of information. He had used his poison. He had promised the lobster that if he obeyed, he would provide the antidote periodically. He needed to explore Coral City to better understand this world and become more powerful. While heading towards the city, they saw the catfish with Quirong. The lobster quickly realized that the catfish had found someone to form a contract with. He explained to the protagonist that Quirong was famous in Coral City for being sadistic. She enjoyed capturing marine creatures and torturing them to death. If they fell into her hands, they would be in serious trouble. Learning that humans existed in this world, he wondered why he had been reborn as an octopus rather than a person. The lobster panicked and advised him to flee. If the catfish discovered their betrayal, they would both be tortured. He reassured the lobster as he had a plan in mind. Using his flexible tentacles, he distorted his body to the maximum as squids were invertebrates and capable of doing so. Using his color-changing camouflage ability, he mimicked Quirong's appearance. He felt proud and like a true genius. Approaching a bit, Quirong greeted him, thinking he was her older sister-in-law. He needed to appear natural. He couldn't let the catfish uncover his true identity. As he conversed with Quirong, the catfish asked the lobster if it had formed a contract with Quirong's sister-in-law. What he didn't know was that Quirong's sister-in-law had already formed a contract with another marine creature. A person could only form a contract with one marine creature. If the catfish knew this, they would be in trouble. The lobster replied that there was no need to worry after he had abandoned and fled from him. The more the protagonist talked with Quirong, the deeper the conversation became, and it became harder to act naturally. He told her he was planning to visit his sister. She was also planning to visit her sister, so she proposed that they go together on her new marine creature. While they were talking, the catfish started to sense a scent that was quite familiar to him. He realized that she wasn't Quirong's sister-in-law but the octopus from before. Fish, through their tentacles and sense of smell, could distinguish scents within a range of up to 10 meters. He informed Quirong that she wasn't her sister-in-law but a sea creature. He reverted to his squid form, and the lobster quickly distanced itself from them. He was angry with the catfish for revealing his identity despite abandoning him in the past. The catfish felt no remorse, he only cared about himself. Old Quirong was happy to have found a level 3 creature. She hadn't expected to make such a gain on the same day she formed a contract. She was willing to capture both of them. She had an obsession with mistreating marine creatures. If they fell into her hands, they would be in serious trouble. The protagonist gathered his courage and planned to fight her using his old trick. The lobster was familiar with this old trick. He grabbed the lobster again to use him as a bat. Seeing that they were about to fight, Quirong and the catfish used the double reflex ability. A dazzling light appeared, and at that moment, the double reflex ability was triggered. As they merged, a level 10 one-punch man appeared. The catfish had become much more powerful. The catfish asked him if he was amazed by his new appearance, but he felt disgust knowing that using the ability turned creatures into corpses. Due to his mockery, the catfish punched him, creating steam in the underwater environment. He used the lobster as a shield to block the steam, but unfortunately, the punch was too powerful and they both fell back a few meters. He had taken some damage, but the lobster, which had received the punch, was unconscious. In the blink of an eye, the catfish appeared behind him and struck again with his fists. However, he dodged the attacks at the last second and used his inkjet ability. Using the same move twice in a row against the catfish wouldn't work, so he began accumulating energy in his fist to use his lethal punch. This punch destroyed the entire area, including the ink zone. He realized that if he were hit, he wouldn't have a chance to survive. He quickly searched for a place to hide. The catfish used his ability and created a powerful underwater tornado with a punch. After using this ultimate attack, the double reflex ability ended and their bodies separated. Seeing that the technique didn't last very long, Quirong blamed the catfish for being useless, but the duration depended on the strength of both sides of the contract. The catfish thought that the old woman was incapable of doing anything by herself and only caused trouble. As they surveyed the damage zone, he realized that his punch had destroyed half of the area, including the rocks. The catfish smelled a strong odor coming from the lobster's body. Quirong thought that the squid had been destroyed due to the punch. Quirong took the lobster's body to take it home and cook it. She got on the catfish and ordered him to head to her home. He could still sense a faint squid smell coming from the lobster's body. 
Hidden within the lobster's body, he had used his trump card, the mimetic camouflage. After a while, they arrived at the Coral City. This city had a similar feeling to the human world. Most wealthy individuals were accompanied by sea creatures. On the other hand, people in worn-out clothing didn't have sea creatures. The protagonist didn't take long to realize that only the elite Atlanteans could possess these creatures, or those who possessed creatures became the elite. All the people without money went to a place to receive charity. The man who was in charge of the store stared fixedly at Quirong and her sea creature. After a while, they reached Quirong's house. She was exhausted, so she ordered her servants to prepare something for her to eat. The protagonist still stayed with them since he hadn't had a chance to escape on the way. She handed the lobster's body to Zinion to prepare dinner for that night. This was the perfect opportunity to escape from the kitchen later. First, he needed to explore the city and then search for the contractors of the sea creatures. Upon seeing the servant's face, he realized she was Zinion. She had also been reincarnated. Upon arriving in the kitchen, they were alone. That girl looked identical to Zinion, but she had never been as obedient as she was now. He planned to introduce himself to ask about her origin. Meanwhile, she prepared her knife to start cooking the lobster. Right before she could cut, the protagonist shouted at her to stop. She got scared and thought he was a ghost. Seeing her reaction, he was more than sure she was Zinion. He deactivated his camouflage and calmed her, telling her he hadn't expected to find her in the deep sea. Seeing a sea creature, she panicked and started to call for Quirong as she fled. He had forgotten that he had turned into a squid. He quickly jumped and covered her mouth, telling her that he was Huey King. Although he couldn't understand how she had ended up in a place like this, she was the person he trusted the most. If he could form a contract with her, he wouldn't need to worry about finding someone else. He asked her how she had ended up in the deep sea, but to his surprise, she didn't remember any Hueke. Meanwhile, Ningyi was bringing food to the dragon lord. He asked the dragon how much longer they would have to hide. The dragon replied that once he had recovered from his injuries, they couldn't let the Q family know of his existence, and they couldn't reveal the contract they both had. It had been three months since he had reincarnated in this world. He had barely been surviving thanks to his trickery tool. The girl who had reincarnated him in this world had promised that if he could reach the top in this new world, he could live forever. But if he failed, his existence would be erased forever. At that moment, he had thought it was just nonsense. However, since the day he fought against Uncle Sir, he realized he wasn't the only person who had traveled to this world through reincarnation. The biggest threat in this world was the people who had also been reborn like him. Currently, he was injured, and his wound was closing rapidly. His current plan was to secretly gather strength and eliminate all competitors. Before he could finish, Ningyi left because he always said strange things. The dragon thought that Ningyi had been acting strange lately. He was only trying to reveal his plan, but Ningyi didn't even pay attention and left. The food they had brought him wasn't very appetizing, so he decided to quietly go and take a look at the kitchen. He silently reached the central courtyard and through the window, he overheard Zinian talking about how they weren't from this world. He immediately realized they were reincarnated. The protagonist was telling her that they already had victory within their grasp, but suddenly an out-of-control truck appeared and ended his life. After that, he was reincarnated in this world as a small squid. She didn't believe him and thought he was a very skilled scammer who invented extravagant stories. If she didn't believe him, there wasn't much he could do. Suddenly, a system window appeared and notified him of hidden clauses. The first one stated that after signing a contract, users would receive supernatural abilities, along with 250 more clauses. He wanted to sign the contract so she could regain her memories of her previous life. He took a scroll from the system window and asked her to sign with her fingerprint to recover her memories. But she refused, thinking it was a scam, and the city police had educated them about these types of scams. The system warned him that both parties had to agree to sign a contract, and given the other party's resistance, establishing the contract was not possible. Suddenly, the dragon entered and told Zinion that he was telling the truth. Upon hearing the same thing from another sea creature, she thought both of them were involved in a group scam. The dragon didn't expect to find someone who had just been reborn in the same place as him. He, too, was a person who had reincarnated to this world from another place. In this world, both Atlanteans and sea beings could sign the double dimension technique contract, and the system could only be possessed by individuals who had been reincarnated in this world as sea creatures. Zinion was also able to see the system because she had reincarnated as well. The protagonist asked her why she didn't have memories of her past life. He replied that he wasn't sure of the reason, but some reincarnated individuals only had very limited memories. He inquired about how many more reincarnated individuals existed in this world. All of them had been brought by a girl named Xiang. Upon learning this, the dragon assumed a combat stance. Quickly, he sensed the danger and used his tentacles to grab Zinion, saving her from the dragon's attack. The dragon intended to eliminate all the reincarnated individuals in this world to reach the top. Xiang had told him the same thing, she would take him to a new world. 
but he had to survive and reach the peak. If he died, his existence would be completely erased. The dragon wanted to be the only one to reach the summit. The protagonist told him that it wasn't necessary to eliminate the others to reach the top. Both of them were in trouble, the dragon's level was on a completely different scale from the opponents he had faced before. The dragon wasn't going to wait for him to level up to cause problems in the future. He thought of the squid as a rookie who had just left the beginner's village and was facing the boss. With its claws, the dragon advanced towards them. In that moment, the protagonist realized that he was one of the people who didn't waste time and kept his promise. Such individuals were the most dangerous. He noticed that the dragon also had a wound on its chest. This could be his opportunity to attack. He used his ability and expelled ink at the dragon, but this dragon was unlike the other opponents. With its sharp claws, it cut through the ink curtain. The squid seized this chance and, using its small tentacles to swim faster, delivered a strong blow to the dragon. But to his surprise, the dragon grabbed his body with its fist and threw him forcefully toward the ground. Before he could impact the ground, Zinion quickly ran and caught him. She asked him why he was willing to sacrifice his life for a servant. This was because in his previous life, he had promised to bear the weight of her life. Upon hearing this, the data chain began to falter, and she began to recover her memories, remembering her childhood friend. She asked him who he truly was. He replied that he was Huey King and asked if she was willing to sign a contract with him. The conditions for signing the contract were met, and she signed the contract. The contract signing was successful, and the bodies of both of them began to merge.